Let's sing together. Lost in wonder. He chose the cross with every breath. Perfect life, your perfect death. You chose the cross. The crown of thorns you wore for us. Crown the sweat, eternal life. You chose the cross. And though your soul was overwhelmed with pain. Obedience to death you overcame I'm lost in wonder I'm lost in love I'm lost in praise for and more Because I'm Jesus I'm failing Sinfulness broke the chains of my disgrace. You chose the cross. Up from the grave, victorious, you rose again, so glorious. You chose the cross. The soul that surrounded you is mine. Yet not my will, but yours be done, you cry. I'm lost in wonder, I'm lost in love, I'm lost in praise for evermore. Because I'm Jesus, I'm failing. We start in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Uh, welcome this morning to Holy Communion, and I'm sorry for the problems with the sound that we've had. Uh, however, it is a joy to be together and to celebrate with you. Now I know that you can't join with us physically in, in Communion because we are scattered, you're not in this place. However, during the time of communion is an opportunity for you to make your spiritual communion and at that point there will be the prayer, the special prayer that comes up at that time as, you know, we can feed on the body and blood of Christ wherever we are. We don't need the bread, we don't need the wine because the Lord is present with us in our spiritual communion. And so as we come together today, it's a joy to be able to wish Helen Wilson and Becky Fryer Betty Hill, as we knew her, Jenny Ailey, Irene Uhiara, and Phil Wilson, a very happy birthday this week. And I think, as I always say, the band is going to do us proud as they join us in wishing them a happy birthday. Thank you. 
are continuing through this week on uh, Wednesday at 7.30 via Zoom. And so, would you please, uh, if you are able to join us, do join us. If you haven't already, let us know that you would like to attend. Then either let myself or Linda know, and we'll make sure that we are able to get you a link and to send you the necessary preparation material uh, for that. Church has, will be reopening from this afternoon for public worship at 3 o'clock. This afternoon we have communion at 3 o'clock and then we enter into our normal routine from next week. Uh, we are following, continuing to follow the, uh, the guidance that is there to keep you safe uh, as you come to church to worship. Uh, so there will be social distancing, there will be uh, the sanitizing of hands and uh, in order to be able to enable us to keep you safe and as well as make sure that we have a space for you, uh, could you please book your, with Linda, our church warden, um, and let her know so that she's able to make the appropriate plans and preparation for you. I look forward to seeing as many of you as are able to join us over the next couple of weeks at the Sunday afternoon communion service. As we turn towards our communion uh, and towards our service, let's start by singing our first hymn. A reminder that we trust in God just as I am.
hear the Ten Commandments read to us as well as what the New Testament reflects on that. So hear these commandments which God has given to his people and examine your hearts. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. Lord, have, have mercy. You shall not dishonour the name of the Lord your God. You shall worship him with awe and reverence. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Christ is risen from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Honour your father and mother. Live as servants of God. Let us work for the good of all, especially members of the household of faith. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Live peacefully with all. Overcome evil with good. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Be honest in all that you do and care for those in need. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbour. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Love your neighbour as yourself. For love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions and penitence and faith. And we spend a few moments as we say in quiet, confess our sins before God Almighty, and then we'll join together in the Kyrie Confession. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Lord. Have mercy. have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect appointed for today, the third Sunday in Lent, the special prayer that we all say together, Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory, 
before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we sing our next song, Jesus Holy and Anointed One. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus clears the temple courts when it was almost time for the Jewish Passover Jesus went up to Jerusalem in the temple courts he found people selling cattle sheep and doves and others sitting at tables exchanging money so he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts both sheep and cattle he scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables to those who sold doves he said get these out of here stop turning my father's house into a market his disciples remembered that it is written seal for your house will consume me the jews then responded to him what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this jesus answered them destroy this temple and i will raise it again in three days they replied it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days but the temple he had spoken of was his body after he was raised from the dead his disciples recalled what he had said then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken and this is the gospel of the Lord praise to you O Christ we have heard the written word read and now let's let's think about those words of god and and what they mean to us and what it can do to change our lives may i speak in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen well good morning and at this time of year the sight of the first daffodil usually gets many of us all into a frenzy of spring cleaning wanting to make sure that everything in our house is spick and span whilst we're thinking about cleaning out the cupboards and sweeping under the furniture think about this spring cleaning whilst worth the effort will last only for one season but spiritual cleaning could have an eternal influence so let's just not dust behind those bookshelves let's dust off our bibles and get ready for a spiritual spring cleaning the bible encourages us to draw closer to god and particularly during lent whilst we may be reflecting on our own failings this could be the first step of our spring cleaning project let's ask god to help us psalm 51 verse 10 create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me jesus clears the temple courts which is our theme for today is found in all four gospels matthew mark and luke place the event after jesus's entrance into jerusalem sorry after G G jesus's final entrance into jerusalem john places it very early in jesus's ministry but wherever it is at the beginning or end of jesus's ministry to be in all four gospels this event must have been very important and something of note that everyone remembered to imagine anything like the original event we need to picture the scene 
It does not take place in the sanctuary of the temple itself, but takes place in the outer courts of the temple. A huge area, big enough to house a few football pitches. Jews were required by law to travel to Jerusalem at Passover time, so there will have been crowds of people flooding into Jerusalem, and more specifically, into the temple. Passover was one of the most important Jewish festivals commemorating the exodus of the people of ancient Israel from enslavement in Egypt and is still remembered today. On arrival at the temple, the people would be expected to pay a temple tax and be able to buy birds or animals for sacrifices. The only money acceptable at the great temple of Jerusalem was coins of the Tyrian dynasty, coins from the city of Tyre. Now, because Jews came from all over the civilised world at that time, they obviously wouldn't have had any Tyrian coins. Now, if we were able to travel to Europe right now, we would go to the Bureau de Change to change our pound sterling into euros. But they didn't have that facility. So they solved the problem by setting up tables in the, tent, in the temple courtyard with clerks called tablers or money changers who would exchange foreign money into temple currency. This convenience, however, grew into a right old racket with large profits being reaped at the expense of visiting worshippers. And it was all about money. If people had travelled far, they would not have been able to bring sacrificial animals with them, so they'd have to be bought at the temple. And these animals, cows, sheep and doves, they were sold for vast profits too. Well, just imagine him coming to church this afternoon for the three o'clock service and finding money changers and animals all over the car park, right up the path and in through the Peter doors. Imagine the sounds. Imagine the smells. Imagine all kinds of mayhem. And this is what Jesus found. And it enraged him. It doesn't tell us in this version, but in some versions, it does say that Jesus was angry. Yes, Jesus was angry to the point of driving everyone out of the holy grounds. He drove out all the animals and turned over the tables of the money lenders. He said, get out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. I believe that Jesus became angry and acted as such for two reasons. Firstly, Jesus cleansed the temple because he considered that the people had lost the original sense of what the temple was for. They had turned this sacred place into a marketplace. Effectually, a farmyard of convenience for everyone, especially the dealers. But Jesus could see how this convenience was destroying the true purpose of worship in the temple. This convenience had actually lost sight of the true purpose, namely to love and serve God and neighbour above all things. What had happened here was that the people had forgotten the zeal for the house of God. What they were doing instead was focusing on a religion of convenience, full of selfish gain. A religion of convenience. Now, there's no doubt about, no doubt about it. A religion of convenience is attractive 
to some people because it does not expect much of them. It is a religion that helps maintain everyone's comfort levels, to keep everyone happy, to please all people at all times. As it was with the traders at the temple, they had lost touch with the grace of God. They had lost touch with true worship involved, involving living in a loving, respectful relationship with God and with one another. Here, Jesus challenges a religious system so bedded in its own rules and practices that it is no longer open to fresh revelation from God. But what Jesus found at the temple exists in modern day Christianity as well as for the Judaism of Jesus' day. What would Jesus find in our places of worship today? Well, except for the occasional blue tip, Jesus probably wouldn't find cattle, sheep or doves. But what would he find? What would he find the same attitudes as that at the great temple? Our religion just being a business, centred on the things we do rather than the God who is present. I wonder if as people we tend to crowd so much into our lives, rushing here, rushing there, we forget God in our lives. And I'd like to share a personal story with you, if I may. And I'm not proud to share this story. Some years ago, I met a young lady who told me that she had a challenging job to do at 12 o'clock the next day. She was going into a school to talk to children about her faith. She normally went with others, but today she was going to do this on her own, and she felt completely out of her comfort zone. And she asked, would I pray for her? That she would be able to focus, she would be confident, and she'd do the, word, do the work well and get the words over to the children. Of course, I said, yes, I will pray for you tomorrow. It had got to about 11.45 in my jam-packed day, and I realised I had not given this young lady a thought and had not prayed for her. And I, of course, remedied the situation and did pray for her just in time. But that isn't really the point here. I felt so ashamed at forgetting her and forgetting to pray for her that I considered that I'd let myself down. I'd let the lady down. And more importantly, I had let God down. And like the people in the temple, do we become selfish? I certainly felt selfish. And it is convenient to think that everything revolves around us. Are we worshipping God as we should? Are we the people he wants us to be, to open our lives, to live in response to his ways and not our own? Because it's not all about us. I mean, many of us sometimes sit on various committees and meetings and probably squabble amongst ourselves. I want this. I want that. No, this is how it should be. But is anyone actually listening to God? Are we actually listening to that still, quiet voice cutting through the mayhem? Do we ever listen to what God is saying? Are we really looking for God to speak to us afresh? Are we really looking for God to speak to us afresh today? Now, the second reason I believe that Jesus, in his righteous anger, 
cleanse the temple was that he wanted this temple to be a place of worship for everyone. He wanted it to be totally inclusive. The out-of-hand trading was taking place in the outer courts of the temple, which the Gentiles, the non-Jews, would go. The Gentiles were permitted to enter the temple grounds and walk within it, but were forbidden to go any further than the outer court. But the traders had covered the outer courts with their animals, etc. Therefore, Jesus cleansed the temple to make room for the Gentiles. And remember that Jesus came to welcome all people into God's family. It may not really have been the money changers and the selling of sacrificial animals that was the real problem. I mean, they had to do this if they didn't have the correct coinage. But the fact that it had become such big business, leaving little room for the Gentiles or much else. Could it be that our lives have become marketplaces instead of temples, leaving little room for God to dwell in us? We know that God's presence is not confined to the temple or place of worship. We can speak to him anywhere we want to. But in those times, it was generally understood that the temple was God's place, dwelling place, and needed to be treated accordingly. The disciples would have remembered that it was written in a psalm of David, Psalm 69, verse 9, For zeal for your house consumes me. Jesus throws the mechanics of temple worship into chaos, disrupting the temple system during one of the most significant feasts of the year, giving the authorities of the time even more desire to kill Jesus. Jesus foretold the permanent end of sacrificial worship in Jerusalem and its replacement by his own death. This prophetic action points ahead into the future at the end of his life when he would make a new covenant, not based on animal sacrifices, not dependent on one holy building, rather a new covenant made effective through his suffering, death and resurrection for all humankind. We and all people are all welcomed and accepted into God's family. So who are we in this story? Are we a seller? Are we a money changer, a buyer or a worshipper? Or are we a disciple? Whoever we are, during this season of Lent, maybe it's a good time to reflect what prevents us from worshipping God as we should. For worshipping God is one of the most important things that we can do. We could consider all the things in our lives that prevent us from doing that. And finally, let us draw encouragement from today's Gospel reading. Jesus' action at the temple went right over the heads of the people that he was dealing with. But we have a chance of making a change to our hearts and our mindsets. And only a change of heart can make people right with God. Through the grace of God and blood of the Lamb, Jesus, we can be cleansed and we can be made new. Let's pray. Search us, O oh God, and know our inner thoughts. Examine us and reveal our thoughts. Cleanse us and make us new. Touch us and make us whole. Equip us and give us strength. Meet us and speak your word. Hear us and accept our worship. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Thank you, Linda. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And so let us pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ, to God our Heavenly Father. We pray for the Church throughout the world, in our own land, and here locally. We pray for the many challenges that beset the Church in lands where there is continuing persecution and repression and suffering simply for bearing the name of Christ or speaking about him. We pray, Father, you would encourage our brothers and sisters wherever they are. We pray that in every adverse circumstance the Church might continue to serve you with joy and in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we pray for the church in this land, and particularly in our diocese and parish, we pray for John and Martin, our bishops, for Nikki and Robert, our archdeacons. We pray for Paul Lola, our rural dean, area dean, in the restructuring of the deanery and the reshaping of the administration. We pray for wisdom and guidance so that the right people would come alongside to hold his hand. In our own parish, we pray for all those who lead ministry and office service for our licensed lay ministers especially at St. Peter's for Linda and Peter and Chris and Catherine we pray for all those who lead our worship and make possible the ministry of love and care Father Give us your strength. And as we get more tired as days go by, so too may we find our strength in you. Our inspiration in your Holy Spirit. And Father, may your word nourish us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our world. Uppermost in all our minds is the COVID-19 pandemic that has swept across the world. But we are still reminded that there are natural disasters that face nations and communities making life difficult. Floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, drought, famine. There are places in our world where violence still continues to stalk the streets. Where people's freedoms are abrogated. We pray, Father, for righteousness and justice and truth to be established. 
May all our dealings and trade be fair and right. We pray for our own government, for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, for his cabinet and government as they seek to lead us during this time with the many challenges that face them. We pray, Lord, for Her Majesty the Queen. We pray for Prince Philip and pray for his recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring before you all those who are sick, those whose names appear in our catch, those who are known to us, and still others who have no one to pray for them, but are known to you. Lord, where there is suffering and sickness, would you bring healing? Where there is discomfort, would you bring ease? Where there is fear, would you bring peace? And we pray especially at this time for Jane Tack, asking for your hand to reach out and touch her. Pray for our family as they minister to her at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those families who are bereaved at this time. We remember the family and loved ones of our sister Pat Hale. The families and loved ones of Jenny Latham. We pray for Linda and Tony as they grieve the loss of Linda's uncle and of Tony's sister. And Father, I pray that where there is mourning and weeping, that you would, Lord, dry those tears. You would sanctify that grief with your presence and bring peace and comfort. I pray, Lord, that the, the hope of the resurrection and the message of Jesus that speaks of grace and peace would hold each heart and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And so for a few moments, let us bring before God the prayers that we hold in our hearts, privately and personally. And so, Father, we thank you that you have said that when we cry out to you, you hear us. When we call unto you, you answer us. And so we pray, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Apostle Paul writes, Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And you can share the peace, a side of that peace with members of your household, those who are watching with you just now. And as we prepare to come to communion, we are going to hear our band as they sing, Oh, how could it be? The communion song.
to receive By your mercy we come to your table By your grace you are making us faithful Lord we remember you And remembrance leads us to worship we worship you. Our worship leads to communion. We respond to your invitation. We remember you.
and learn to be your people once again through fasting prayer and acts of service you bring us back to your generous heart through study of your holy word you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love as we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying holy holy holy, holy lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest we praise and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all on the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. For through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As Jesus, our Saviour, has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Amen. As we come to our time of communion, I uh, ask you to make your spiritual communion where you are, and there is a prayer for that that appears on the screen at this time.
withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out to the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning as we have shared in communion together and come close to the Lord and hearing God's word speak to us. Now may the Christ who gave you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.